Hi there. I thought I would demonstrate today an audio artifact that I'm hearing a lot in webinar recordings these days. Now, you can hear the same thing on a podcast recording. It's especially prevalent now that more people are working from home and using home Wi-Fi for their internet. This is something that, well, let me just play it. I've got some clips here taken from a webinar that I did, and I just isolated a few pieces of the recording. Let's take a listen. I look at whether it's a or disorders, even tuberculosis, a benign sinus, and yes, I'm uh, doing it. All right, that's enough examples. What's going on there? What you're hearing is a little bit of buffering in the Wi-Fi signal. What's happening is the software couldn't quite keep up with the bits that were flowing along the uh, internet pipes, to use a popular phrase. And it stored up just a little bit of that sound for a second and then continued playing it just a microsecond later. So you tend to get a little bit of a hold and then it continues. By the way, the software that I'm using here, I'm using GoldWave. It happens to be an audio editor that I've been using for a lot of years, and I'm familiar with it, comfortable with it. If you were using Audacity or Adobe Audition, it would be the same kind of thing. The software has nothing to do with what you're hearing. If you're a complete novice at this kind of thing, what you're looking at is an audio waveform, just a visual representation of what the person is saying. So you don't have to understand a lot about it. You'll just pick up the fact that as that little line moves across, you're seeing a visual representation of what you're hearing. Let's zoom in to one of those pieces. So I happen to be on this one. I'm just going to isolate this little bit, and we'll play that again. And yes, I'm uh, doing it. So you hear how I kind of got extended? That's this piece right here. It ran down a little bit of it and then continued over here. Now. Is that something that you can fix? Turns out, yes, it's hard. <laughs> it takes some uh, artistic editing. What you're trying to do is find the place where it started to hold it. So that's right about here in the waveform. Get rid of that little section that's descending and then connect it to the rest of it over here. Now I'm gonna zoom way in on my waveform and I'm looking for a place over here at the end. I'm looking at the ending portion. Where does that little bar come up to? It's just about up to this crossbar line. So I'm gonna look back over here for something that looks like about the same place. This bar happens to be just about at that same crossover line. Now I've got it kind of marked at this is where I'm gonna try making a join and get them to come together. And now I gotta get really, really tight on my zoom. I'm just coming way, way in on the waveform. And the way that I like to match things up is look for where it crosses the zero line. So you see it goes up positive and down negative. All waveforms do that. And this little line in the middle is just an arbitrary point where they've picked, okay, going from positive to negative. So this is right where it crosses on the down slope of that piece that I picked to zero. And now I'm gonna scroll way over, whoops, towards the end of it and see if I can find it. Gets a little tricky here. Let me zoom in a bit. There it is. That's the peak that we found. And so I'm gonna come down the other side of that long one to where it crosses that same zero point. And now let me zoom back out a little bit so we can see what we were doing. There's all that section that I had between them. I'm going to click the delete key on my keyboard and it patched them all together. So now it looks like something that just flows. Let's isolate that whole piece and listen to it again and see how well I did. I have no idea. Let's see. And yes, I'm uh, doing it. Mm, that's pretty good. It's a lot better than it was, but there's still a little bit of that. I. Uh, and yes, I'm uh, doing it. All right. So I need to cut out a little more. And now it gets really hard to do. Where do I cut those pieces out? I think it's probably in this section that was up and down a bit. This is why it's an art. So <laughs> we're guessing as to how much I need to cut out. Now this time I'm not going to be as exact on where I'm cutting those lines. 
I may show you why that's important in a moment. Let's see what I just did. And yes, I'm uh, doing it. And yes, I'm uh, doing it. Still needs a little bit more. Wow. Um, okay. So I'm going to try cutting a little more of that waveform out. Let's take it a little farther. I'm going to really cut a whole bunch out in the middle. And yes, I'm uh, doing it. Ooh, that sounded pretty good. And yes, I'm uh, doing it. Okay, so that's about the right sound, but there's a little click in the middle. If your speakers are turned way up, you can hear it. And yes, I'm uh, doing it. What happened was I wasn't paying as close attention to where I'm doing the cut. So what I'm going to do now is come back to what I just did. I'm going to undo. So I've got this is the part that I just cut out, which made it just about right. And now I'm going to zoom way in and try and get it at the same point of that peak. So here I'm on the upside of this slope. It happens to be just about perfect where it crosses the line going up. So I'm going to find that on the other side of my cut. You can see that I was a little off of that. So let's come in to just the same point where it crosses the line going up. And now I'll make my delete again. We'll zoom out. We'll isolate that piece and listen again. And yes, I'm doing it. And yes, I'm doing it. That's good enough for our needs. Yeah, if you were a super audio editor and you're in a studio and you could get great speakers or you're wearing really good headset, you might still hear a little bit of an artifact. But honestly, it's not worth fooling with after that point. Now, you may well say it's not worth fooling with at all because it's just too much work. Yeah, it takes a lot to do this kind of audio editing work. But I just wanted to show you, this is what's going on. So you'll hear this kind of thing happen a lot. Let's go back to the original. A uh, benign sinus. Yeah, so benign got turned into two completely separate syllables. You fix it, and it starts sounding like this. And yes, I do need. And yes, I do need. So it's as if it didn't happen. Great. Can you spot those just by looking at a waveform? Well, a lot of places you can see it. It looks like it happened here, if I listen. And usually those are going to be in the head and neck. So that sounds like it. Here's another one that looks like it happened. There's a little decrease and a, and a blank spot before it started again. Let's listen to that. Histiocytes and not. Yep, that, it happened there as well. Let me come back over to this one. I'm going to make this a little larger so we can see it. Yeah, that looks kind of like the same thing. It's coming down to a little triangle shape, and then it picks up over here after a stop. Let's listen to that. In a sinus, which is histiocytes. In a sinus, which is histiocytes. Huh. You know what happened there? That's not the same thing at all. That's, the per that's a dropout. That's just not separating a syllable. That's just inserting a little bit of extra time into the signal. I'll bet if I just took that out. Let's listen to it again. In a sinus, which is histiocytes. Ooh, pretty good. I think I can take a little bit off of that. In a sinus, which is histiocytes. Yeah, so I could play some more games with it. I actually would chop a little more off of this, and then I would reduce it in a down to zero kind of motion, say, let's take it from full volume down to silence at that point, and listen again. In a sinus, which is histiocytes. Again, awfully good. Good enough for our uses right now. Here's one more that I want to show you. Same thing happening, coming down to that little triangle, and then a blank spot, and starting again. Let's listen to this. Positive for normal histiocyte markers. One more time, listen to this. Positive for normal histiocyte markers. I fooled you. This is not a problem with the internet. This is the speaker doing a very common kind of thing. He started to say a syllable, realized subconsciously, this is way too fast to think consciously. He realized that wasn't quite the word he wanted, and he went back and started again. So let's listen. Positive for normal histiocyte markers. He started to say positive for histiocyte markers, and then he thought, oh wait, I want to put the word normal in there. Positive for hit, no, positive for normal histiocyte. Take out the no, positive for normal histiocytes. Positive for normal histiocytes. Let's listen now that you know what's going on. Positive for normal histiocyte markers. So even though this looks like the same thing we've been dealing with, it's a completely different situation. I would fix it the same way. I'd try to get rid of that little H 
in the in the voice and see if it goes away and then I'd have to take down the the end of the previous syllable reduce it down to zero so it doesn't make a popping noise and let's see what I've just done here positive for normal histiocyte markers okay we're getting closer I'd probably pick it up a little bit honestly at this point it's not worth <laughs> playing with positive for normal histiocyte markers yep Take out a little of that pause. Positive for normal histiocyte markers. Great. So that's good enough as a, as a quick edit. So this shows you, A, what kinds of things you have to watch out for in terms of an internet artifact that's happening because Wi-Fi internets just tend to get overloaded. It also tells you that sometimes speakers just make that same kind of thing happen. It tells you that yes, it is possible to fix these sort of things, but if you've got a lot of them occurring all through there, it's gonna take you all day and all night to work on those. And it's much more of an art than a science in cutting those out and trying to find the overlap portions and piece things back together. And if you're gonna do that, you need to do it right at the same point on the two sides of the waveform where you're cutting so that they join perfectly without a click in the middle. And I hope I've given you a little bit of a clue as to what goes on inside of uh, audio and trying to do post-production editing on an audio recording. That's it for this demonstration.